Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here, and welcome to the channel. Today, we're going through the full workings of the Scandinavian. It's the first of its kind course. We shall be looking at the Marshal, the Bonker Gambit, the Icelandic Gambit, some important sidelines. Before our four years, we will also go through the Schiller defense and there's something favoured by the world champ, Magnus. Let me also flip the board and look at whatever we do from the point of view of black. The Scandi is by no means a very popular opening. It is, however, an extremely robust type of opening. Go for the wrong turn and there is a price to pay. But isn't this the same with every opening? So let's start this up with the normal E4, D5. 95% white takes cannot possibly cover when that 5% happens. For example, knight c3, black can choose to either try or attack the knight. Attack the knight, knight back, knight c6 is something like e3. Has been seen before, but it is rare. What we can additionally ignore is anything to avoid the gambit. If white decides to push on, once the white point invades into the black camp, automatically black has a number of weapons. C5 is the number one response. There is bishop f5, there is e6, and black has great flexibility. We're not going to go through these lines, but maybe next time. What we can see We'll go through something slightly more orthodox. Since the overwhelming majority accept the gambit, let's follow this line. I'm also going to avoid queen takes, d4, and queen a5. What we can do is to look at the line Magnus loves to go for when he plays a Scandi. After queen takes, there is knight c3, and again, we're not going to explore queen a5, but this retreat to d6. This is a Schiller defense. Magnus, every time he plays a Scandi, uses this. If the queen gets attacked, this is what he always does. If d4, which is very popular, black can develop the kingside knight. If you go for a tricky move such as bishop d3, grab this pawn, and this is how easy you drop the game. This check is all you need to secure the queen. And wouldn't this be a dream start? If after knight of six, white goes for this knight development, is something like e5 playable. It's a very tricky and risky move. But if you don't know how to handle this situation, you may be buying the farm. There is very little white can play wrong. If you take the pawn, when the queens come off, it doesn't make any difference how the queen is removed. Nearly everyone will use a knight to capture, but the extremely strong players may also want to capture using the king. The king would lose his castle and privileges, but there are advantages of having the knight on c3. Simply because there are ideas of counter-attacking through b5. When this knight move materializes, whether you defend through king e1, king e2, or even knight e4, everything works. Knight e4 is not recommended because if you are required to cover in this way, what's the point of moving the king in the first place? The knight will be much better on c3. A far stronger response to go for will be knight d5. Knight takes with this fork. King e1. Knight takes, and knight takes on this side of the board. And once you're additionally forced to lose your casting rights, drop this corner rock. If you do the maths, white is far better even after this bishop move to c5. Though it is near certain the knight will steal himself out of the corner, there is a problem. This problem is this check. Cover with the knight, what do you think of something like this? If you attack the bishop, whether you take here or go for this check, 
right is miles ahead. This is not the line I wanted to explore, but for sure for all Scandinavian lovers. After knight f3, a counter attack with e5 should be avoided at all costs. Look for something more safe, something like a6, to stop the access to b5, or something like bishop f5, e6, and c6 are also very playable. Okie dokie, let's come back to explore this knight move to f6. And what you often get to see, one is d4, two is c4, three is knight c3, and four is this bishop check. I'm going to explore all four options. d4 game for the center leads to all sorts of important variations. Very risky approach is the marshal. The marshal looks at the removal of this pawn with the knight. When this knight gets attacked, how will you play it? Right, we gain control of the center. The safe bet to go for is knight f6 and knight b6. There is move number three here. And <laughs> this is one you should only play if you know this variation. This is the move you're looking for, guys. I've gone through this very same line when I looked at the modern Scandinavian. Whatever you do and however you choose to play it, black loses. Go for this pin and you will fall right into black's trap. You need to know your stuff here, guys. Yes, the knight on c6 will fall, but find the move that matters, and this will be the least of your problems. Find this gem, the tables turn. Remove this pawn with the pawn, and there are one, two, three beautiful answers for black. One, there is bishop f5. Two, there is knight d4, and three is to remove this pawn with the queen. Shall we go for knight d4? The idea is extremely basic. None would take the knight because if you miss the fork on c2, well, how easy would this be? What you often tend to see is knight a3. The number one response is not queen takes, but e5. And this move does wonders. It not only saves the knight on b5, but does so much more than this. If bishop d2, just going to remove this pawn. And should the knight come off? There are two brilliant replies. One is queen e4. And two is just remove this bishop. If queen e4 check, if you block with the knight, takes with a check, queen takes, and boy, it's going to hurt big time. This is the move you're looking for. How hard is this knight check? Whatever you do, this queen on b4 will be arrested, and there is no need to carry on with this line of play. Coming back, the same works with bishop takes check. Once the queen removes the bishop, queen e4 check, the queen on b4 will drop. What happens if you try king d1? There is this bishop check, and should you reply with f3? I really had to consult an engine here. There was no way I could have found or figure out this one. Does anyone want to know what the engine recommended? It's not a queen move, and it's not a bishop move. This is the engine's number one response. The queen on e4 is safe because of the pin. If you grab the bishop, you are walking into a mate. Knight b3, check, leaving only bishop d3. Rook takes, check, king c2. And now knight takes with a fresh check. And the rest you can fill in when you're ready. Coming back to this very move. If the queen drops back here, knight d4 is coming wherever this queen goes. There is a nasty fork on c2. Once again, this variation goes south for weight. Coming back, as soon as the attack on the knight is initiated, white goes down. The only move that works for white is his attack on the knight. Once the knight is forced back, black is busted. 
If you now go for this knight on c6, what if you chase after the queen, not through b5, but through knight c5? Queen b5 is a big no-no because of a6, the queen drops just like that. The only safe bet for white is to get the queen to retreat and all the problems for white go away. Knight e5 and another attack on this knight. And once the knight backs off, what a mess. White is not 100% winning, but white has an extremely strong control of the board and of many key squares. Let me come back to see something different. What's the situation after knight c6 and not a3, but knight a3? It's totally winning for black. It's all about removing this center pawn and white is as good as done. Knight a3 attacking the queen, queen e4, and in with a check. And whether you respond with bishop e2 or bishop e3, you will not be coming out of this one. Bishop e2, and if you don't fancy knight check, you can either go bishop d7 and the queen will be in trouble. If knight b5, and why not, go for this check on c2. King f1, and you got to think a bit deeper and whether you really want to get rid of this rook out of his misery. Even if you go for him, Knight takes here with a check two, king d8, and knight takes. Just forget black being up on development. If we do the counting, white and black have exactly the same pieces all the way down to the very last pawn. So why is the position not equal? Well, there is at least a problem with one knight. The black knight does escape from the corner, but this knight on a8, has zero chance. The white queen is offside, the black queen is everywhere. And again, black is the only side that wins here. Let's come back to this position and just forget this queen check on a4. What if white develops a queen side knight? If you want to destroy the center, there are three excellent choices. There is e5, or a more direct approach is to simply remove this pawn the queen comes off, this knight fork is not only enough, but more than enough. King d2, knight takes, and it's only the king loses castle in white, but there goes white center too. There is another nifty response by black. Simply bring out this bishop, and again, his job done. Being unable to cover this spot on c2, you can write off this variation for white too. Let's come back to the very start and try this variation. C4 is very popular at lower levels of play. It's not an out of book move, and yet it hasn't got an official opening name. The aim is to try and hold on to this pawn. By far, there are two main responses. There is the Icelandic Gambit, and there is c6. Today, I'm gonna to go through both of these lines. e6 is the Icelandic Gambit. So let's try this first. If you take, and you don't really have to, once you regain with the bishop, d4 is met by this check. If knight d2, I've been experimenting with this line of play, and especially with something like this. But is knight e6 safe? Go for d5, and you're busted. Where are you? What happens if you <coughs> let this bishop go for these two central pawns? If white chases after this bishop, bishop a5 would be the normal way to go about it. But what if you try something up normal? What if you castle and castle long? Remove this bishop from the equation, and I sincerely think it will be black, the site with all the action, and despite dropping its two long range missiles. First of all, we have this check. 
whatever you use to cover white will hurt, should I better say, get hurt. I come back to move three in this opening, and rather than the Icelandic gambit, go for something slightly more dynamic. It's this move. Again, white doesn't have to take. There is d4, but just for the sake of it, let's get rid of this pawn. And let's capture with the knight. What you often get to see is this kingside knight being developed. And again, the number one response is this open move. D3 stopping the access to E4 is not going to cut it. Just go for it. And should the pawn get captured, queen takes and king takes. Once this pawn comes off two, bishop E3 is forced. And if any side is pulling the shots, you have a pretty good idea what side this is. I play this opening endless times. It can hardly go wrong. If you don't like bishop c5, there is this bishop move. If knight c3, trade here. Not a check just yet, but this bishop exit, and see how fast these two bishops rule the board. Bishop b2 is coming. This pawn on c3, you can kiss goodbye. Black will castle with a bit of imagination. You know, who goes south if they're not south already? Another variation you get to see is bishop e2 to prepare white to get the king to safety. Go for this and you get prepared for the attack on this knight. If knight here, after this fall up attack, the knight is busted. So what you normally get to see is how to make a big hole in the water. Returning the knight to base is not a loss of a valuable tempo, but this is losing big time. Bishop c5 mounting the pressure on white's weaker spot. And if he now replies with something as vague as d3, takes, takes. And black has one, two, three, four, and possibly more moves. Very strong responses. First, we can castle. Two, there is a check on e7. Three, there is knight e5, which is very tricky. And four, there is knight b4. If knight e4, should you go knight grabbing? There is this bishop takes f2. King takes, drops the queen. But what happens if king e2? Everything works for black here. From queen h4 to queen b6. And what else is there? We have queen f6. Bishop d4, but also you can trade the queens. Let's try this variation. Bishop e6, king e2. And after you get the bishop to safety, there is so much to look out for. Knight d2 to cover c4. Go long here. And after knight f3 and rook e8, any side can win. I'm not sure knight g5 works because of this check. Drop the king back, and what we have is an extremely difficult position to evaluate. One thing for sure is that there are plenty of tricks going on. Can anyone see who's better? If you start shooting blanks, you may get nailed. H6, for example, and we know how it ends if you remove this pawn. Rook F8 is a buster. G6, and not knight E5, but knight e7, and white is done for the day. Coming back after d3, another combo to go for is queen d4, trying to enforce a checkmate in one move. Knight h3 doesn't work, because once he comes off, you can easily hit home with a check. Once you flush out the king, <laughs> he's not coming back. Okie dokie, let's come back to explore yet another opening line. After knight f6, one move you do get to see very often is this bishop check. Bishop d7, bishop back to c4, and not b5, which is regularly played, but this bishop attack. f3, bishop f5, and knight c3 to try and hold on to this pawn is not far from the other variations we tried. 
T6, D takes, and Knight takes. And though black is a full pawn down, there is plenty of activity. Coming back, this bishop b5 initiative. If you go c6, takes, and takes leads to a much open type of game. If you drop the bishop back to safety, not queen a5, but something more creative. Try something like e5. Knight f3 and e4 may lead to this pin. There is a move that stands out for black. Find it. And white will be playing catch up. What do you make of this bishop move? If knight g5, just give the king to safety. And white is finito. Mimic black when you get this move going. C4, the only response. Once you come in with this queen launch, white falls short once again. So coming back for the nth time, we have looked at all the main lines of the Scandinavian. We looked at the Marshal, the Icelandic. Okay, one opening we still need to go through is the Bonker Gambit. So after the Gambit is accepted, we have Gambit number two. It's a direct launch to E5. And just in case you have never seen it before, this E5 aims to do one thing only. The right word to use is confusion. It stops d4, but who needs d4? If not knight c3, just remove this pawn. After bishop takes, again, black hands over a pawn for pure development. Bishop b5 check, not for the sake of a check, but for development. c6, bishop a4, and if you like it hot, there is queen a5, there is queen g5, there is something even sneakier. What if you opt for this queen move? It's not bound to work, but black has nothing to lose. If queen e2, if you feed this position to an engine, and let's talk about an engine such as stockfish, and an engine everyone has, in case you didn't know, Stockfish loves all the positions for white. The problem with Stockfish is that it tends to exaggerate evils. Let the engine think much deeper, and those numbers tend to reduce. This position for black is perfectly playable. Bishop g4, for example, is quite decisive. For starters, it forces off the ladies if you use the bishop to capture. Knight c3. Knight of six, d4, and castles. Yes, black has sunk a pawn, but still has a very active game. Okay, before we wrap things up for today, e4, d5, takes, knight of six, d4, takes, and this fresh attack on the knight. The real party starts with this knight initiative, 2b4. It's something I really never called it by its official name, it's the kill variation. That's K-I-E-L. I'm going to finish it off today through a game that was played between Rode and Sitsevich. It dates back to 1901, and this is just to show you how long this specific trap has been around. Rode went for Queen A4 check. The other knight was developed. Once the knight was pinned, b5, and the party was already on. Rod grabbed this pawn with the queen. The knight came in with this fork. And mind you, this was a game at a time where chess programs did not exist. This was one heck of a preparation, though. King up the board, and it was a knight takes, and it was a knight d4. This is how Zitsevich played it. With everything going on, the knight was arrested. If bishop takes, king takes, drops the queen. But when this bishop also departs, this might be winning for black. But you will need to put a lot of work and sweat to make this one work. And there is a very big if here. White is missing the queen and black is missing the knight pair in one of his bishops. Because development is zero, figuring out who is better is a real pain. Let's come back to see how this game was played. It wasn't bishop takes, but this discovery instead. 
Queen d5 is the only answer something rode went for. And this is a slightly weird one. It was a knight takes in the corner, but this knight move. Queen takes and takes with a check. Once the king was flashed forward, the knight was returned to c2. Neither side has developed anything. And though we can see the rook is most likely to go. Does it look at all bad? Bishop f4 and not takes, but this attack on Mr. Bishop. And white here sees no problem in removing this pawn. The reason for this pawn sacrifice was to be able to release this check on b4. Once the king was forced into hiding, this is how black played it. A solid and silent rook attack. When black took the decision to remove this pawn, the strategy is clear. The rook was next, and how does black play it? He got the king to safety, and allows his rook to fall too. Did white take? Of course he did. Once the bishop was eliminated, white falters and falters big time. He went chasing after this bishop. After bishop takes, and a move black went for, this is also where the game ended. What we've seen was a morphe type execution using the kill trap. That's K-I-E-L. If king a2, we have a mate in no moves actually. Let's hear it. Alternatively, if king a4, rook before check, king a5, And is there a checkmate here? If knight takes rook, this bishop also comes off and only white escapes, but also has enough pieces to win this game. So the answer here is not knight takes, but this knight move. If knight takes here on a3, there is knight takes c6 with a check. When the king is forced here, isn't this a lovely mate? And let's hear it. It's a rare one because you're using the pawn, the knight and rook. Coming back to this position, if instead of king a2, you go king c3, is this is any better? Bishop before check. King back to b3. After this, with the discovery cutting out the king's path to c3, if king a4, there is rook b4 check, and after king a5, this is exactly the same combo we tried earlier. Knight d4, and if this bishop goes, never forget, there is this check in the exact same recipe is used, and let's hear it. This was a masterpiece, a true masterpiece that was played back in 1901, when I was only two years old. Okay, this is not entirely true, but let's forget about my age for now, and look at what we did cover today. We started with some basic concepts. We looked at the modern Scandinavian. We looked at the Marshall. We looked at the Icelandic Gambit. And we also looked at the rare bonker gambit with e5. The most exciting, most dangerous attempt in this opening is the kill. It's not risk free, but if you get it to work, the end result is fast and easy. a3 solves everything if the kill is adopted. Combine this video with my previous coverage of the Scandinavian defense. And there is nothing else you need to know. Okay, there is another last thing though. I may need to add to it to have it all covered. It's a Schiller defense, the one Magnus Carlsen goes for. So e4, d5, takes and takes with the queen. After the queen gets attacked, not queen a5, but queen d6. And this is the infamous Schiller defense. Try this against an engine, and you're about to lose miserably. 
Magnus played it with some success. Only goes for it when up against relatively weaker players. Flip back to 9 January this year and to the game between a fantastic star, aka Firuja and Magnus. Interesting development using the Shiller. It's asking for all sorts of problems because it goes against the very basic principles of the game. Never get the queen out before you develop other pieces because the queen does become vulnerable. Magnus uses Scandi against Fabi back in 2014. In 2016 he used it again, but maybe the most memorable game is that of 2017 between Magnus and Adivan. It was in Vikansai where the Gipsless variation was played. Magnus was saved by miracle, but besides this, the Gipsless variation is maybe something to look at next time. After e4, d5 takes, knight f6, d4, knight takes, and knight f3. This is what the Gipsless variation is all about. Again, not a very strong move to go for. But if it works against the world champ, it can work against anyone. I hope you enjoyed, and there is far more to come, guys. So, until soon, everyone, this is your chess puzzler.